Good morning, good morning, and welcome everyone to our first outside service, our first uh, service since February. Jeez, <laughs> seems like it's been a long time. Seems like it should be like just hug time all around for everybody, you know? Just first since it's been so long since we've been able to see each other face to face. Uh, we want to open up with a couple of songs this morning. And then we have a, a couple of great announcements. We have a great sermon for you. So, go ahead. We'll get started. Our first song we'll be singing will be Hallelujah. Lord, we sing your praises loud, sing them to the stumbling crowd. Sing of Jesus and his word, sing until the earth has heard. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Sing of crosses and his blood, earthquake, darkness, and the flood. Sing of judgment, sing of praise, sing until we see his face. Alleluia, Alleluia. God is why we live and sing. We the servants be the king. Feel his power, see his life, living in the church, his wife. Alleluia, alleluia. God is justice, God. from above God is sovereign o'er the land nations bow at his command Alleluia Alleluia Life is but a passing glance. Seek him while you have a chance. We are made of not but clay. Till we change on that great day. Alleluia. Alleluia. song will be be with me lord sometimes i feel that i could fight an army with just me and you and there's no one could harm me but sometimes i can feel a little shy it's been i need to know that you are there that's why i'm singing be with me lord be with me lord 
be with me, Lord. Be with me, be my only God. I know you said that I would not be tested more than I could bear, and that you have my best in mind with everything that ever comes my way. I know you're in control, so hear me as I pray. I'm singing, be with me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. Be with me, be I only God. Now help me, Lord, to share what I've been given. Help me make a difference with the life I'm living. I show my neighbor where to treasure stored. Help me know you promise you be with me, Lord. I'm singing, be with me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. Be with me, be with me, be with me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. Be with me, be my only God. All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Michael Montaño, and this is my lovely family. This is my wife, Katerina. This is my oldest son, Luca. He's four. And this is Nico. He's two. And we would like to welcome you guys to uh, the Miami Valley Church of Christ. Uh, this is our very first service. Um, if you're visiting with us, we want to welcome you, our guests. We're happy that you guys are here and hope that you feel loved and uh, welcomed here greatly. Um, so actually a month today, we just moved here from California. And uh, it's been quite the journey. Uh, we've been filled, uh, just obviously going through the challenges of moving across country, but also uh, feel so loved and welcomed by all the disciples here. Um, we've been really encouraged by those who has, uh, who've invited us over for food, uh, who have just uh, reached out to us, wanting to just make sure we're doing well, we're settled in. And uh, it reminds me of a scripture in Ephesians 2. Um, Nico's going to help me turn there. Um, it says, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the, corner chief, uh, as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Um, by his spirit. And I, I just think it's so cool to see like the scriptures come to life with us coming all the way over from uh, California and just feeling like uh, not not having to feel like strangers in a new in a new state for us in a new town because of the fellowship of uh, uh, the, uh, God's household here. And we just feel very grateful for everyone who's encouraged us. And we just want to say thank you so much. And um, yeah, we're just really happy to be here. And we really feel like God moved us here. And I know people have been praying for just so much for the church. And uh, I really pray that we can come through and, and give and add value here to uh, the church family here. So we love you guys very much. And thank you so much for uh, just all the encouragement you've offered to us. And my wife would like to share a little bit. Come on, Katarina. I'm just going to keep it um, I just am super grateful, guys. Um, our son yesterday leaving the haze, he said, I had a blast. And he used the word blast because it was so fun. And the fact that he can move across country and have so many friends already is just amazing. So thank you for filling our hearts so much. And we're so grateful and excited to give back to you. So thank you. All right, so um, just a few logistics here. So we're not going to be passing out trays for the contribution. They will be here on the left and right side of the canopy here. Um, and then also, um, I'm sorry, that's not contribution. That would be for the uh, offer. Uh, yeah, for uh, yeah contribution. So you should get the little cups. I'm sorry, communion. Um, so they'll be here on the side. Um, you can go ahead and grab those for yourself. Um, and then also for a contribution, there's uh, the box here on the left side. Uh, you're right. And you go ahead and put it in there. There's envelopes for you as well as sanitizer. And you want to go down? And um, 
And then also, if you are, see you later, Nico. If you are uh, doing Venmo, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and do that for us. We have a camera rolling right here. So try not to pat in front of it. Uh, this will be posted on YouTube later today. So with that, let's go ahead and start off our service with a prayer. Father, we uh, thank you so much for blessing us with this day, God, that we could come together as a family um, and uh, just really be encouraged by the fellowship, God, but also just feel your spirit, God, here. And I really pray, Father, that you bless this church, God, bless this service. Uh, be with um, uh, Brian Hinkle as he delivers a message, God, to encourage our souls, Lord, to draw us closer to you. Uh, be with the worship service, Father, and uh, we thank you for blessing us with this day. And we uh, pray that it is a sweet offering to you, Lord, and pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. With that, we'll have one more song, and then we'll be graced with a great Great Sermonia. We have one more song. It'll be in Christ alone. is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fear is drowned and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love. And righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Still on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I stand. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost his grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, if by the precious blood of Christ, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry till fire, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand. Till he returns. Or calls me home here in the power of Christ. I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man 
can ever blot me from his hand till he return or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand. All right, good morning, Miami Valley Church. It's great to be here. July 5th. Uh, my name is Brian Hinkle, and uh, my wife and I, Lauren, and uh, our boys, Braden, Ellis, and Wesson, we're so, so, so excited to be here. Uh, it is, uh, we've been in Dayton, Ohio now four whole days, and um, it's, we're here. I can't believe we're actually here. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so excited to be here, so thrilled to be here, just uh, honored by God to be part of the Miami Valley Church here in Dayton, Ohio. And um, we just feel, we're just we're just super, super thankful that we are, it, we're here, even through a pandemic, even through six months of of all kinds of different things that, that this day is here. And I think you, as a church, physically being together, you guys haven't been together since March 1st, I believe. So it's July 5th. And here we are on an outdoor service. None of us ever thought this would be the case when 2020 started. But here's the case. This is what happened. And uh, But it's great to, uh, to be here today for our first Sunday with all of you that we get to be outside and we get to uh, praise God and grow closer in our relationship with our great, mighty, powerful God. Um, so I uh, hope you all had a happy 4th of July yesterday. It was so cool. Uh, just driving home, we were on a hill somewhere and we're able to kind of see all of Dayton and the whole horizon was firework city. Like I, you know, it was Dayton's the gem city. Maybe it should be the firework city, even though fireworks are illegal. I was like, wow, look at, look at all this. It's amazing. It was really cool. And my, our boys were like, look at the fireworks. Oh my goodness. Look at them all. And uh, I think it just, uh, it even kind of brought a, a tear to Lauren's eye out of joy. Just, just seeing, Seeing everything that we saw it was really, really cool. Um, but uh, just in case you, you've, you've just arrived, um, there are communion cups on either side. Um, we're not passing out the communion cups just uh, because of COVID, uh, but you can just come up right now. It would be a great time because I am going to, my lesson is going to go into a communion. So you can grab communion cups on, on either side. Uh, and also the contribution uh, boxes to give contribution. There's envelopes you can uh, check and put the contribution in the contribution boxes. Um, so everything's up there. There's face masks, there's hand sanitizer, there's song lyrics, uh, there's disinfectant wipes. Uh, so there's no toilet paper, but I think we, we have plenty of supply of that now. That was a few months ago. We're all good with toilet paper. So so anyways, um, but, uh, but yeah, so last week, um, you know, Sean Kirkland started us with a lesson for us and our sister church in Cincinnati. And the title of that lesson, uh, we're starting a series titled uh, By Faith, um, Trusting God When, fill in the blank. Okay, uh, So he started with an introductory lesson from Hebrews 11. And so we're going to stay in Hebrews 11. And we're going to look at different characters of that faith hall of fame that we find in Hebrews 11. So, you know, when you think of 2020 thus far, God is stretching our faith. He's putting us in situations that we have never, ever been in before. Situations we don't like, situ situations that offend us, situations that we object to, situations we find difficult, situations that are inconvenient, and situations that just flat out stink. And, and they stink so much that we want to kind of take matters into our own hands. Uh, and, and we want to let God become secondary in our life instead of first and foremost. So I think there's many, there's many tough and uncomfortable situations that are going on these days that following Jesus, it's on our hearts. We want to follow Jesus with all our hearts. We want to put Jesus first, but it can be really tough because of the situations that we find ourselves in. And so, you know, what extreme would you go to? To live by faith. What extreme would you go to to help a loved one? You know, most of us would say for sure, absolutely, I will go at any length at all to protect my children. 
to protect my spouse, to protect a family member? What lengths are we going to to protect those people in our lives with our faith, but also our friends and those we're studying the Bible with and those that we are, are reaching out to? You know, uh, just for a brief time, we're going to talk about someone that gets very overlooked in Scripture. Uh, but they did a very amazing thing, something that really brought salvation to all the Hebrews and to the country of Israel. Uh, and it's a woman in the Bible that, like I said, is very easily overlooked. And the woman's name is Josabad. Does anyone know who Josabad is by any chance? Anyone? She's in the Bible for sure. Nick? Moses' mother. Moses's mother. Yeah. Josabad. We are going to look at her today and her faith. Her name is mentioned in Exodus 6.20 and in Numbers 26.59. Uh, because there is no kids' kingdom, we will. I'll do my best to keep things short. So I have a one-point lesson. The one point is three hours long, um, but it's one point, so it'll be short, okay? Uh, but the title of the lesson, the one point of the lesson is See Beyond the Church. See Beyond the Church. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll, uh, we'll dive into the scriptures here. Uh, God, it is uh, so great to be out here today uh, just with uh, a body of believers, as was read in Ephesians 2. This is your household. We are sons and daughters of yours, and it is great to be together on this Sunday morning um, singing to you, praying to you, uh, diving into the scriptures, getting a chance to remember Jesus when we take communion later, God. Thank you so much that we have the capabilities to do these things for those at home, uh, we miss you and uh, we love you, but pray that this is a time that to really connect your hearts uh, to Jesus as well. Just help all of us, whether we're here or watching through live stream, God, uh, move our hearts to uh, to a faith where whatever is happening, uh, whatever is going on, uh, whatever situations we find ourselves in, that uh, Jesus Christ is at the front of our lives and our decisions and our hearts and our thoughts. We love you and pray this in Jesus name. Amen. So in Hebrews 11, verse 23, it says, By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, because they saw he was no ordinary child, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. So here's an incredible story of faith where the Pharaoh of Egypt has said, You know what? The Hebrews are growing too big. They're, 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 they're more in number than the Egyptians. I don't like this. This isn't good for, for a different nation to have more people than our nation here in Egypt. And so what Pharaoh does is he his edict is to kill every born son of the Hebrews, right? And you'll see that edict in Exodus 1, 16 and 1, 22. So he says, you know what? Every born son, throw him into the Nile. That's what the throw them in the Nile and they'll drown right there. Right. But Moses's mom, she does something totally different. She hides Moses. She doesn't report having a son. And remarkably, I don't know how this is possible, but for three months, she keeps Moses quiet. A newborn baby. Wow. And you think of times in, you know, you look at, you see the maps, you see the history, you see the art, the artifacts. They lived one on top of each other. This wasn't, big yards and spread out. I don't know how she kept Moses quiet, but I'm also wondering if the neighbors knew about it and the neighbors kept quiet too, which would have put them in a tough situation because if Pharaoh found out that people were keeping quiet other than Moses' parents, a good consequence is not coming their way whatsoever. It's not going to be a, a, a nice consequence at all. So we're in Exodus 2. We get to see a little bit of, jo of Josephine. Right? Moses actually writes about his mom in Exodus 2. This is the first eight verses. We're going to read verses 1 through 8 and see what Moses says about his mom. So here we go, starting in verse 1. And this is from uh, the ESV translation. My NIV translation is packed somewhere in a box right now. So ESV, here we go. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman, Joseph had. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes 
and dabbed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the riverbank. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her young women walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman, and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. You know, so after a period of, of three months, Moses' parents were no longer able to protect Moses. She puts Moses in the, you know, and she makes this basket. I wonder if she was thinking of the ark and Noah's ark as she was making this basket. But here's the thing is she puts Moses in the same place where the other babies were being thrown and killed in the Nile River. This place of nightmares, this place of horror, this place that was just a, a place that no one wanted to associate itself with, a place that I'm sure years later Hebrews never wanted to go to because of the, the, the drama and the trauma that occurred. She takes Moses and places him in that same place, a place of killing, a place of murder, a place of blood. And this was a place that would lead to her child's salvation and one of the things i realized is just putting her child in this basket it didn't guarantee deliverance she still had to trust that god would work in some supernatural way to protect moses and deliver him you know she had to see beyond the basket to see that the baby would be delivered from the nile this place of death this place of murder this place of nightmare right and, and it took an incredible amount of faith for her to let her baby drift along that river. And I think a, a river that would most likely for sure lead that baby to an Egyptian where he would be killed. I think she had faith beyond the basket, right? And as godly parents or as disciples, we want our children, we want our friends, we want those we're studying the Bible with, our neighbors we want them to be saved. We want our family to be saved. We want people, as many as possible, to be saved and delivered from our culture that we find ourselves in. But to see that, to see our children, to see people saved, to see our neighbors become Christians, guess what? That takes a lot of faith. That takes a lot of faith. To see our children and people we're studying the Bible with, not only does it take a lot of faith, but once they become Christians, for them to stay faithful to the end, that takes a lot of faith as well, a ton of faith in God. And so we've got to see beyond the basket. We've got to see beyond the church. Sometimes our goal is for our kids or our friends or those we're studying the Bible with to repent and be baptized and to become part of God's church, which is awesome. That's a great thing. We rejoice in that for sure, but that can't be the main goal. Right. That can't be the motivation to see our children and new people make it to heaven, to see our friends. We want to see them become children and new disciples that in the midst of a storm, that in the midst of a tough situation, that in the midst of corrupt culture, that they stand up for Jesus. We want to see them, our kids and new disciples love Jesus, to live like Jesus, to think like Jesus, to walk like Jesus, and to one day be with Jesus. There will for sure come a time when we will have to put our kids and new disciples and our friends that have become Christians, those that we're studying the Bible with, we're going to have to put them in the Nile River. We're going to have to put them out into culture and let them swim and stay afloat and let them go to places that are dangerous, that are scary, Places that we would never want them to go to because when we think of that place, all it does is bring trauma and grief and mourning to our hearts. But we're going to have to take our children and let them go to those Nile rivers 
in our lives. You know, Joseph had, had to have an amazing trust in God in this situation. An amazing trust that that trust in God would guide Moses to a place where he would be delivered. And so we must see beyond the church. We must look towards eternity. We must look towards Jesus. We must follow Jesus. And so this takes having eyes of faith. We must see and think beyond if we are to be disciples of faith and followers of Jesus. How do we go about that? How do we help our children? And how do we help our friends, those we're studying the Bible with, become disciples and then stay disciples to the very end? And so I just have five kind of li- like quick little bullet points for you. I'm actually wrapping up, believe it or not, but I can be long-winded. So I'll stop talking about how long-winded I can be so I can move on. Does that sound good? You got, you got, okay, let's do that. All right. So the first thing is this bring Jesus home. Bring Jesus into your homes. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Most kids, friends, people we're studying the Bible with don't make it because they don't see Jesus in the home and they don't see Jesus in our lives. We are followers of Jesus 24-7, privately and publicly. The second thing I thought of is we got to talk about Jesus everywhere. We want our kids to make it. We want our friends to send the Bible to make it. We've got to talk about Jesus. Deuteronomy 6, so much talks about this. To put put God on our hearts, write it on our walls, write it on our door frames, put it on our children's hearts. You know, are we we talking about the stories of God and Jesus? Are we making up songs about Jesus? Are we talking about Jesus in school, out of school, are we creating an environment where Jesus is the environment where God is so present and so obviously there in our lives, publicly and privately in our homes? Talk about Jesus everywhere. He's the ultimate man. He's the most amazing man. I know it's easy to talk about the rock. He's, he does some amazing things. And there's other people. But Jesus, rock's got nothing on Jesus. He's the ultimate rock. You know, I think another thing, what can help our children, what can help our friends study in the Bible is slow down. Slow down. Slow down enough to spend time with your kids and your friends and those you're studying the Bible with. Slow down. Get to know them. Get to know them so that you can impress Jesus on their hearts. When you think, of, I think of Solomon, right? Solomon, he's the wisest man that ever lived, right? But he didn't slow down. And that didn't go well for his sons as one of his sons, because of that lack of godly training, the kingdom of Israel split in the northern and southern kingdom. We've got to slow down, spend time with our children, spend time with those we're studying the Bible with. Two more things for you. How do we help our children? How do we help those we're studying the Bible with to follow Jesus? Be open. Be open about your struggles and how you've overcome them because of your faith in Jesus. Especially be open with your teenagers. If you don't have teenagers, be open. Say, hey, daddy messed up. Daddy messed up. Hey, I I was angry. I was upset. Apologize to your children for the times where we choose to not follow Jesus. But also share that with your friends. Share your struggles. Share what what, what what you're studying and why you're studying it. You know, how you became a Christian. How you grew up. How Jesus changed your life. Your mistakes then. But also, I think it's easy for us as Christians to talk about our mistakes then. How often are we talking about our mistakes now? I got mistakes now. Yeah. And we got to talk about those with each other, with those we're studying the Bible with, and our children. Be open. Be open. Because if we're not open to seeing the power of Jesus, you're not going to see the power of Jesus. It's just going to become this mundane thing. It's just going to become a church thing. It's not going to become a Jesus thing. We are who we are because of Jesus. Amen to that. And the last thing is make hard decisions now. Make hard decisions now to seek first the kingdom, Matthew 6, 33. Kids and people know when we are not seeking first the kingdom of God. Our kids and our friends who we study the Bible with, they can see the compromise. I remember when, uh, you know, when before Weston was around, we had Braden and Ellis, and we were leading the teens in Maryland, and we had Teen Devo every Friday night. Our kids loved Teen Devo. 
They love being around the goodness of godly people and seeing that and interacting with that and just being around that, right? But it was really hard for Lauren and I to do stuff because we got these two little ones running around. So, hey, great idea. You know what? We'll get some babysitting. The kids can stay at home. They can go to bed early. That'll be great because their bedtime's at 7. When they come to Team Evo, they don't go to bed till like 10, 10, 30, 11. So, you know what? Let's do that. So, what we do? We got some people to babysit for them. They stayed at home. You know, they watched some Daniel Tiger probably. They they maybe watched uh, some some Pokemon or Beyblades, right? And and sure enough, the next day, wait, you went to Team Devo? Yeah, we had Team Devo. What? We want to come to Team Devo. Why didn't we come to Team Devo? We want why do we want to be there. And then Lauren and I were like, what are we doing? Like, what? They want to be around the kingdom of God. They want to be around God's people. And we started having babysitters come to Team Devo because we didn't want to show them that compromise. We didn't want we wanted them to live the same life that we're modeling. And so bring them along with us. We bring them to Bible studies and uh, they're excited to come. Can I come? Yeah, you can come. And uh, it's fun. It's a blast. And I think, you know, compromise will compromise now will lead to compromise later. And just the last thing I thought is, you know, uh, family devos. How do we help our children? How do we help our friends? Doing family devos. Invite your friends that you're sending the Bible with. Invite them to come to your family devos. And you get to act out scripture. I don't know a better way to remember scripture, to have scripture on your heart. Acting it out, doing it, you know, ad-libbing a little bit. It gets you into scripture. You kind of wonder the, the, the lines between the lines that we don't see in scripture. And you, you get to bring life to the scriptures, you know. So we get to act them out. And I think what really helps with those things, even for me, doing family D helps me when I'm out and about. It helps me bring Jesus into those situations and into those experiences. And I think it'll help our friends that we're saying the Bible with. And it helps our children as well to know the godly ways and the godly things to do when we are out of the home. You know, I, the Bible doesn't say much about Joseph. Ed, but what it does say is it does show her faith and her faith for her children. We see Aaron become a priest. Miriam, for sure, is doing great things and helping out and, and is right there in the mix. And we see Moses. She must have put many godly things into practice, considering the circumstances that they were in, the situations they found themselves. So I pray that we live a faith that sees beyond the church, that's able to see Jesus and follow Jesus, that we have our eyes fixed on Jesus, that we are we are we are people helping others follow Jesus, not follow the church, not becoming churchgoers, but becoming Jesus followers, lovers of Jesus. You know, it's never about the church. It's always about Jesus. Faith it takes for conversion to happen, for people to become followers of Jesus. It's got to be about Jesus. And it's got to be about Jesus to the very, very end. You know, it's always Jesus because it's Jesus who we follow. It's Jesus who delivers us. And it's Jesus who saves us. And so in Luke 23, there's this amazing passage as Jesus is on the cross. It's his last actual recorded physical conversation with a physical person. And in verse 39 of Luke 23, it says, One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do not, do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we are received the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly, I say to you today, <coughs> you will be with me in paradise. Even Jesus on the cross has the faith to save. Even on the cross, Jesus is making it about him. He doesn't say, hey, today you'll be in paradise. He says, no, today you'll be with me in paradise is what he says. Being a Christian is always, always about Jesus. I think it's amazing to me. It's always about living a faith that follows Jesus. And it's about having a relationship with Jesus. Spending time with Jesus, getting to know Jesus more and more. I think it's a, Jesus's faith here is amazing to me as he's on the cross because on the cross because he isn't checking out. In those final moments, he could be discouraged. He could, you know, he finishes strong. 
the last physical person he talks to on the cross, he brings salvation to. It's a difficult situation for Jesus, but what great faith. He could be bitter. He could be upset. I'm sure he's downright exhausted and weary. But he never justifies what he did in the past. Like, you know what? I've done enough. Let me, let me just check out now. My time is almost up. Here he is helping someone come to salvation at the very last moment. Even on the cross, he has the faith to save. He has the faith to go, go beyond the situation and to do what God has put on his heart. Likewise, let's follow that and imitate that Jesus and do what God has put on our hearts. And let's see beyond the church and let's see Jesus and let's bring Jesus to the gem city. So we are going to take communion now. I will pray uh, for for the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And we will take, uh, hopefully you have a communion cup and uh, we'll take communion. But let me, let's, uh, let's pray. And then we'll do that. Uh, God, uh, what a joy to be here today. What a joy to just think of Jesus. And uh, it's so easy to get caught up in, uh, in, in things other than Jesus, even really good things such as the church. The church is an amazing thing. You give us the church. We need the church. But, uh, but God, help us always as a church direct each other and direct those that we come in contact with to Jesus. Showing them Jesus, relying on Jesus. I think of Jesus in the way he is on the cross. Still active, still giving, still paying attention, not shutting down, not going, you know what? I'm done. He's still engaged. He's still listening to conversation. He's still having conversation. It's amazing to me. That even as he's ridiculed on the cross, he's willing to overlook that, to not get offended, and to help the other thief on the cross. God, I'm uh, blown away by his heart. May we have those hearts in those situations uh, as well where we could easily get offended. Help us go into the Nile River faithfully following Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. It was an amazing uh, message, and uh, uh, just uh, thinking about that line, uh, faith behind, beyond the basket, and, and just how our focus needs to be on Jesus. Um, uh, incredible. Uh, right now, I've got a um, whole bunch of announcements, so, um, so uh, be paying close attention. I'll start with the uh, first ones that I don't have written down. Uh, uh, with your uh, communion cups, there there are some um, uh, trash cans on both sides, so so you can uh, drop those off after the service uh, there. Uh, and if you didn't get a chance to uh, get one, uh, you can still still pick one up, uh, pick one up there. And then also anyone um, uh, able to uh, stick around and help um, break things down and uh, and clean up that that would be uh, very very beneficial. So anyway. Uh, this coming next Sunday, oh no! <laughs> uh, th this coming Sunday, we are going to be meeting back out here. That at least that is the plan right right now, and uh, and uh, we uh, we figure that we'll be learning every week and getting better and uh, and and that way. And so so it'll be exciting. It's great to be able to meet together, and um, and so um, so with that. Um, uh, in the um, uh, 
fellowship. It's like we've got some uh, technology going on. We've got the uh, uh, Facebook Live and uh, YouTube Live, and we're going to be posting on, on YouTube. But, but we also have something. There, there are some people in, in cars that uh, are um, – not able to join and some people at home that are not able to join uh we ha also have a a means of fellowship so uh and uh th there's a, a link uh, for a google meetup um uh you can speak to my wife and and she can get you the link if if um if you don't have that so um also uh this coming wednesday we're going to be continuing uh, to meet via zoom and uh, so that that's an exciting uh Exciting time. Um, the uh, preteen camp revamp, uh, July 11th to 17th on Zoom. It's free. And you can see um, uh, Michelle Phoebus or Jennifer Headland uh, for more details on that. The uh, virtual teen camp, come out on faith. Oh, that sounds excellent. Uh, July 20th through the 24th. It's going to be hosted by the Louisville Church, and will be on Zoom, and um, and you can uh, speak with the Headlands more, more on that, and um, and as I uh, mentioned before, if uh, it's like uh, make sure that that uh, you're following us on on uh, and liking us on Facebook and YouTube and subscribing and doing all that, uh, there there is there is a benefit to that. So uh, so everyone in the family can do that. Anyway, um, so uh, just just a little tidbit. Uh, some some other news. Uh, uh, you guys remember um, uh, Ramon and Christina Jordan? Uh, they are not moving back, unfortunately, but they are expecting a uh, baby boy in January. So, and that's exciting. Also, um, uh, Eric Pearson and Amelia Smith, who we uh, introduced a, a few weeks back, uh, who were coming through town. Uh, they, uh, Eric had got a job in the, uh, the uh, Dayton area and is going to be moving here. Well, uh, he just got engaged to Amelia, so it looks like we got a two for one. So, and uh, and also um, uh, the uh, the hairs are moving today, um, so they they picked a nice cool day to move. So, uh, but are looking for help. So, if anyone can help, uh, that they, they are starting up at uh, two p.m. And uh, that's at the at their old address, uh, 121 Shawnee Run, Apartment F, and that's in West Carrollton, uh, 45449. You can see me for that address. Or if you um, can't get there right away, perhaps you can uh, meet at their um, new address a little bit later on in Xenia. We can get that information to you. So, um, and, um, and remember... Uh, as far as that technology for the fellowship, let's inundate the the people that that couldn't meet with us uh, for in that fellowship. So so just just uh, uh, let's let's um, really encourage them uh, uh, there. So let's uh, have a closing prayer, and we will have one one closing song, and then we'll be uh, be uh, free to go. And but but remember that do have the contribution boxes on, on the side as well. Uh, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you so much for being able to come together and meet together physically. Uh, you have blessed us with, with having a means to meet together virtually, but there is nothing like meeting together uh, personally and physically, seeing each other's um, uh, faces up close and and personal but but as as in this day and age not not too close yet so but uh but god we uh, we are so grateful for even to be able to meet but but as as uh, brian was was sharing in the message that is uh is is not just about the church it's about jesus and it's about our 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 faith it's about our love and it's about our love for for one another and and following jesus and I pray just that we can have a heart like that, that we can have a heart of faith, a heart to follow. We are so grateful. We, uh, we praise you. We honor you. 
and we desire to please you. Amen. Amen. We have one last song. Everyone will understand. We'll sing praises heard around the world. Lord, your love has saved us. Precious blood has made us. Now your message takes us all around the world. Can't you hear them? Clears and singing. People, they're rejoicing with one voice. They are shouting. Singing hallelujah, praise is heard around the world, into all creation, each and every nation, defending your salvation, all around the world. Can't you hear them, hear them singing? The people, they're rejoicing with one voice. They are shouting, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise is heard around the world. Against the demons fighting. Holy Spirit guiding. Families were uniting all around the world. Can't you hear them? Hear them singing. The people they're rejoicing with one voice. They are shouting, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise is heard around the world. Come on, come on, can't you hear them? Hear them singing. The people, they're rejoicing with one voice. They are shouting, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise is heard around the world. We are praises heard around the world. Praises heard around the world. We are dismissed.